In this video, we're going to look at ordinal patterns. Ordinal patterns describe the ordering of data, and it's a useful tool for algorithmic trading. In this visualization, we are looking at the last four closing prices. Each subsequence of four closes we can describe as one of these 24 ordinal patterns. Let's slow this visual down a bit, and you can see how they line up. Later in the video, we will use the frequency these patterns occur to compute permutation entropy, which can be a useful trading indicator. More on that later. Permutation entropy is a very common use of ordinal patterns, but I want to be clear that ordinal patterns are useful for much more. I've used them in many of my own trading systems and experiments, using them in a variety of different ways. Let's look at how ordinal patterns are built. What we just saw were 24 ordinal patterns looking at the last four closing prices. The number of data points to consider is called the embedding dimension. The number of ordinal patterns is equal to the factorial of the embedding dimension. So in the simplest case, we have a dimension of 2. There are two possible ways those two points could be ordered. If we have a dimension of 3, there are six possible ways those three points could be ordered. Dimension of 4, 24 possible ordinal patterns. Dimension of 5, 120 possible ordinal patterns. The factorial becomes very large very quickly. In trading applications, we don't have a ton of data to deal with the high number of patterns larger dimensions describe, so in practice using a dimension of 3 or 4 is typically most practical. Each of these ordinal patterns can be described with a number or a symbol. So for an embedding dimension of 3, we have 6 ordinal patterns, and we can describe each of them with a symbol. These patterns do not consider the possibility of equal points. The reason for this is we are focusing on a trading application. Equal prices from one candle to the next are rare. Adding additional ordinal patterns to accommodate for equal prices adds a considerable amount of complexity for something that happens very infrequently. To take raw data and classify it as one of these ordinal patterns may seem like an easy problem, but it is a little tricky, especially when generalizing for all possible values of the embedding dimension. The approach we will follow is described in this paper. It describes a generalized way to find which ordinal pattern describes data for any embedding dimension. The paper has all the mathematical details as well as all the information for dealing with equal points if you're interested in those. Let's look at the code to classify data into ordinal patterns. This function takes an array of data and an embedding dimension D. It returns the ordinal pattern symbol at each point in the input array. First, we find the total number of ordinal patterns. We declare D1 as the dimension minus 1. To classify patterns, we need a set of multipliers for the specified dimension. They're defined here. We create an array that will hold the ordinal pattern symbols found at each index. We initialize it as NANDs. We loop through each index of the input array. At each index, we get the most recent D values. This section finds which ordinal pattern describes the recent values. We compare each element to the values preceding it and keep a count. The greater than and equal to sign will handle any equal values that may occur. These counts are adjusted by the multipliers we declared earlier. After this section, the variable pattern ordinal will be the symbol of the ordinal pattern, a number from 0 to the total number of ordinal patterns. We save that in the output array and return it after the main loop. With the function we just looked at, we can pass an array of data in. Here is a section of closing price data. Then we can count and see the number of occurrences of all the ordinal patterns. In this case, the first and last ordinal patterns, the streak of four up or down moves, are found much more often than the other ordinal patterns. The ordinal patterns can be used to describe small price patterns that may precede upward or downward moves, but it can also be used for other tasks as well. For example, if we had three moving averages, let's say of lookbacks 10, 20, and 30, we could use the ordinal pattern mapping to find all six possible arrangements of the moving averages. I'm planning on making a video about that later on, so subscribe so don't miss that. It'll be a cool one. The algorithms I showed in this video could be used to find local tops and bottoms in the price. Then sequences of local tops and bottoms could be described with ordinal patterns. Higher highs, lower lows, and every other possible combination. But a very common application of ordinal patterns is permutation entropy. Permutation entropy gives a measure of the complexity of a time series. We compute the permutation entropy with the probability distribution of the ordinal patterns found. If we find all the ordinal patterns an equal number of times, we will have an entropy of 1. In practice, this is very rare. But the closer the permutation entropy is to 1, the closer the distribution is to uniform. We can compute the permutation entropy in a rolling window to measure the complexity of the recent price behavior. Let's look at the code for permutation entropy. This function finds the permutation entropy of an input array with a rolling window. We pass it the embedding dimension d and a multiplier. 
The multiplier controls the look back. The total look back is the multiplier times the factorial of the embedding dimension. So if we had an embedding dimension of 4, there is 24 possible patterns. With the multiplier of 7, we have 7 times 24 total candles in the look back. We create an empty array for the output values, initializing it as NANDs. We find the ordinal patterns of the input array using the function we already went over. We loop through each index in the input array. At each iteration of the loop, we get the most recent collection of ordinal patterns in the look back window. Now we build the probability distribution of the ordinal patterns. We use the pandas function count values to find how many instances of each ordinal pattern was found in the look back window. We loop through each of the possible ordinal patterns and convert the count of patterns to a probability by dividing by the look back window. After this loop, all the values of this frequency dictionary will sum to 1. We loop through each pattern in the probability distribution. We multiply each probability by the log probability and sum the products. This is the core of all entropy computations. After this, we normalize the sum to a 0 to 1 range. Then add the current permutation entropy to the output array. I would like to say this implementation is not optimized at all. It is quite slow. I coded it in a way to be easy to read, not fast to compute. Here is the permutation entropy computed on hourly Bitcoin Tether data with an embedding dimension of 3 and a multiplier of 28. So the total look back is 168, one week. The closing price is shown in green and the permutation entropy is in gray. It's interesting to see how this indicator evolves with price. Remember it roughly measures the complexity of the series. Higher values of entropy mean the price has a more uniform distribution of the ordinal patterns. As the market trends, the permutation entropy has a loose tendency to drop. I have found this indicator useful in my own trading strategies used as a filter, particularly for mean reversion style strategies. I found some mean reversion systems perform better when the measured entropy is low. The relationship this indicator has with future price movement is complex and nonlinear, so it needs to be used in conjunction with other methods of analysis to be useful. I think it is worth checking if a strategy can benefit from this indicator. It's not a silver bullet, but it can help quite a bit when applied to the right trading strategy. The permutation entropy is not restricted to using just the closing price. Here is the permutation entropy computed on the volume in yellow, and again the permutation entropy on the close is in gray. To be honest, I've yet to find volume entropy useful in any trading system, but I still find it interesting and I typically test it as a filter along with the closing price entropy on any new strategy I develop. It may be useful applied to the right trading strategy, probably a trading strategy that significantly involves volume. In this video, I showed ordinal patterns and permutation entropy. I will be making some videos in the future that use the ordinal patterns to build interesting trading strategies. Permutation entropy is a rather niche indicator, but it is a traditional use case of ordinal patterns, so I felt it should be mentioned when talking about them. The full code for this video is available on GitHub and is linked in the description. That's it for this one, thank you for watching.